Welcome to Haxby Shed. From the first time that I saw trepanning on David Wilk's channel, I wanted to make one of these, a tailstock trepanning tool. Just look at this, isn't it impressive? So in this series of videos, I'll explain how I made this and show you that it works. Welcome to part three. Now I can press these together. Normally I just use the brute force approach, but this time I'll heat up this collar and then second stage I'll heat this up here. Well that's something, it drops straight in. Hmm, I'm not quite sure what clearance I set, but I was surprised that that dropped just in like that. I'll press it home to be sure. Now I'll heat up this sleeve. It certainly won't drop in at the moment, but it might do once this is hot. It's all part of my learning experience. I used this to see how hot it had got and it was about somewhere between 110, 120 degrees centigrade. So you can see it makes a huge difference just giving it that bit of heat. Well we'd better see if this is running true. I expect there'll have been distortion where I welded. Straight away, that doesn't look too bad actually. Looking by eye, of course. I can only clock here, I obviously can't clock here. Not unless I want to destroy my DTI. And this time I forgot to turn the microphone on. Here I'm making a countersink to take the live center. So next we need to machine the sides of these scrap channels so that they follow a circular shape. I've taken as much as I need to off these scrap channels. I just need them to be curved really. But if I take too much off, this bit here will get too thin and the hole that secures the carbide will be clo too close to the edge. Just a bit more cleaning up. Well we're progressing quite nicely but if I'm really honest with you I would put the chances of this working at something like 10 or 15 percent. But I'm still going to finish it, and we will find out, won't we? So the things I need to do, I need to TIG a bit of weld on here, and also on there, to make sure it can't spin on this shaft. I need to fit this coolant feed somewhere. And also, I'm going to have a go at hardening and tempering this key steel. Now I don't know if I've actually got enough gas to do that. I've only got that propane butane lamp. So I may have to go and get a new gas canister to finish that. And then really we're just about there. Fit the carbides, set it up in the lathe and uh, we'll give it a try. I should really be more optimistic shouldn't I? I mean things usually work out okay, but um, I think maybe I've cut these walls a bit too thin. I think the tube itself is not going to be rigid enough, or the carbides will pull out of these screw holes, or a number of other things might happen. <laughs> but I'm going to finish it. Well, 
Well, I gave up. I got it to about, I think, five or six hundred degrees, but it was cooling quicker than I could heat it, or it reached an equilibrium. My torch just isn't hot enough. So we'll leave it there. I'm going to put a flat on this pipe just to take this coolant fitting. There's always got to be a job for a shaper. Now to drill and tap it quarter BSP. The tapping drill should be 11.8 millimetres, but I don't have one. I've got a 15.32, which is an 11.9, so that'll have to do. The next job is to put a TIG bead on there and one on there to stop these turning within this tube. Well it's done, but I had to use stick. When I tried to use TIG I was getting too much porosity in the weld and I think it was contaminants coming out of this seam here and this seam. But it's made quite a decent job of it I think now. Couldn't really get it hot enough again. It'll have to do at that. Well this is it folks, moment of truth. You can see how I've set up the tool and it's steadied with the fix steady. I'm going to turn the coolant on in a minute. I'm going to set it to about 200 rpm. I'm going to feed it in by hand if the tool survives, then perhaps I'll set up the feed for the tailstock and then we can let this saddle drag the tailstock along. But to remind ourselves about what might happen, and I don't want to be pessimistic, but I am, I think, realistic, the carbides could be pulled out, the tube here could split because it's only very thin. And also, if it does start cutting, the core might jam on the inside of this tube because I really wanted the cutter on this side to be a bit further in towards the centre. But if it does work, it's hurrah! Look, I can see Swarf here. Oh! I should be more confident, shouldn't I? Yes, well it's cutting well, I can see some Swarf. Carry on. Right, flushed with success, I'm going to be brave and I'm going to put the tailstock power feed on. Call me a sad person if you like, but this is honestly the bestest thing I've ever done, I think. Look at that. It'll take a moment to engage.
Well, it most definitely works. But I think what's happening is, yes, I can see it. The inside of the cutting tube is binding on here, look. And that's acting uh, like a taper, a lock, a wedge. And it's making it very difficult to force in. And this is because the uh, inner carbide doesn't go far enough across. I think if I was making another one, I'd be able to fix that. Excuse me. I'm just trying to machine this out a little bit. There's nothing to lose. I've machined out what I dare, so this will be my last go. Stole my lathe. Never done that before. I'm going to say that the tool was successful. Look what I've managed to cut. And when it wasn't jamming in the centre, it was cutting pretty freely. Look at the swarf. I did have some weld distortion on this tube, but the main problem is this cutter needs to be a bit further towards the centre. Half a millimetre or something would have done it. The reason that the lathe stalled was because this jammed within here. Now I might try and machine a bit of this out, but the problem was I was getting very close to cutting those very thin webs. Anyway, I hope that was useful to you. Thank you for watching. Oh no you don't. Get yourself back into that workshop and get it working properly. Right back in the workshop. Look how tightly that was wedged onto here. But it didn't split those webs. Amazing. Really surprised about that actually. Okay, let's set about moving that carbide in by maybe a mill. Well, you can see the challenge. I need to move that hole about one millimeter towards the center. It hasn't helped that I filled in this section here with bronze. If I'd done it with steel, this job would have been a lot easier. Anyway, I won't put you through the full agonies of it. I'll do some work off camera and come back and report. I've chopped that bronze out with a chisel and now I'm going to re-weld it in steel. Well, a two second blob of TIG with mild steel filler wire and I've effectively extended that shelf where the carbide is going to sit. So now I'm going to put a screw into the existing hole to block it and then try and re-drill it. And then to finish this, quite possibly I'll do it with a file. I'm not going to set up the milling attachment again. I found a screw, put it in, one that was about the same hardness as the key steel. If I tried to use a hardened screw, obviously as I was drilling to one side, it, the drill would run off. I had to re-thread the hole because some of the weld I'd just done had obscured the hole. I cut off the top of the screw to make it flush with that shelf and I cut off the head of the screw underneath. And I'm just gonna put a bit of TIG on the bottom of that screw now. Stand by. There we are. I'm getting to like this TIG stuff. Now we've got the hole filled in. I can re-drill it, re-tap it. Hopefully get it right this time. I guess it was just a piece of the design that I just hadn't fully thought through. Next time, if I was making another, it would be a little bit different. I've drilled it again, and I'm in the process of re-tapping it. I am concerned it turned out the screw I put in was a bit softer than the metal around it. So although I started at the edge of that screw, I think the drilling 
has moved much more towards the centre of the screw and I think I've lost a lot of what I'd gained. Just giving it one last clean up in the bar. Right then, have I done enough? It's definitely moved over. Only way to find out is to test it. Right, we'll try it by hand first and then we'll see if we can get the power's tailstock feed to work. I have tried it a little bit, it doesn't seem to be jamming. Maybe we're going to be lucky. Right, that was basically working with the powered tailstock, but the feed's too high. It's currently set to 0.08 millimetres per rev, and I'm going to take it well down, maybe 0.05, and try that. 0.05 millimetres per rev is about 2,000 per rev, so let's try that. Just about there. The poor old lathe is struggling a bit, but it's going, look. Okay, that's enough, I think. Well, I don't know if that would win the David Wilkes Award for trepanning, but on this scale, I'm very pleased with it. I hope that was useful to you. Thank you for watching Haxby Shed. Magic.